to so play with. So this guy over here, I mean, there's some more books that are going on. So. This is uh, an earlier one. This is from, uh, I think, the late, late, I don't know, 70, I don't, I don't well, probably late 60s, early, early 70s, I believe, because it was after CBS. Don developed a serious 200, 200 after his uh, fiasco with CBS Musical Instruments right. when they bought the 100. This comes from, I think, originally from the San Francisco Conservatory back in the day. And uh, I think Timothy Leary used to play with it. Oh, or okay. had, so you fact, don't lick your fingers? When they told me, when I guess, like, well, make sure you just wash your fingers as you play and don't lick them. And uh, the cool thing about this is that it's one of the few uh, booklet uh, systems that has a keyboard. Yeah. As opposed to having, you know, a touch plate, which... Well, why I'm, is that, then? Because that seems like a massive compromise. Well, I don't know why, but I would think because it was a conservatory, maybe. Ah, okay, maybe yeah. they wanted something, they wanted to be still, uh, you know, on, you know, on the technological edge with the latest as far as synthesizers, but also being able to be accessible from a more um, um, old school right. sort of approach. And uh, a lot of the modules are similar, the smaller versions, like the sequencer is the, you know, the little the little baby of the 16 step and it's just five and then uh, there's uh, two oscillators or so four oscillators which are the same as those just an earlier revision right so the dual ones right yeah the 258s and um, and then there's a a, um, a a graphic basically it's just a, a, a filter essentially mm -hmm. tuned filters and then this module is the the precursors of the easel, the 208, it's called the Dodeca module, and it has a preamp, it has three, three envelopes, three low-pass gates, three, three amp channels, which are very cool because each one has a panning volume and amount of spring reverb, and each one allows you to, to voltage control each one of those parameters. So right. the first channel has con voltage control of volume, the second one panning, and the third one reverb. Right. I thought it was clever, you know, since you can't have them all, just have a little bit well, of variety. Neat, yeah. It's a very temperamental little instrument. Okay, so let's go with the, now I'm going through, I'm cheating with digital effects. Okay, here we go. So this is, I'm just FMing, one, this is just one oscillator. It kind of gives you an idea of what I was telling you before of how much I try to get out of one. Yeah. See, if, if you use live, you can already take something like that and then just find a BPM for it and then use and then it. You but go yeah. Maybe not that, but. But without getting into noise, noise it's fairly easy to come up with um, some pitched. You know, some like sequences or whatnot, if you want so to make stuff from scratch. So is anything normal in this, or is it all patched? No, this is all patched. No. Um, the most normal situation is using shortened bars to connect the envelopes to the gates. That's right. the, the most normal. There's no normal in Bukla world. <laughs> it's normal. And that's why we like it. So people that are not normal can use it, you know. But uh, I like the fact that it was an instrument. As you can see, I never really... I mean, I expanded this with certain modules, but it's still one box, one yeah. cabinet. The 200 is one cabinet. I like that there are single instruments, you know, and they were designed yeah. to be single instruments, so they, they sound good on their own. I do sync them, so the clock that might go to this one goes to this and to the rest of the studio, but That's generally speaking, yeah, generally speaking, I just use the system the way it is. But I've used this for a lot of rhythmic stuff simply because this is very easy to use for... Uh, single out specific frequencies and they're ready to, it's basically tuned filters so there's a certain resonance to them and mm. we can actually hear how that sounds to give you an idea actually we'll do it with noise even though the noise here is broken so it sounds super broken in a good way uh, oh, there you go yeah, you you know. sort of, uh, yeah Atmospheric steam pads. Done. David Lynch soundtrack, okay. You know, done. This is like eraser head. Done. Yeah. <laughs> well, not done. You also need a fucking great movie on top of it, but you know what I mean? Now, the noise is broken, as you can hear, yeah. it kind of pops. That's quite nice. It's super awesome. In fact, I have a even more random. I have yeah. plenty of noises that do what they're not supposed to do, but having a noise that even is, is even noisier than a noise, I think it's. Noisy noise, yeah. It's a, it's a badge of honor, you know? Yeah, definitely. But it's, you know, this is definitely older than I am and I'm very young but you know this is uh, like early 70s you know so it's 
sounds great. And it then, really you know, there's also, we could talk about, about the fact that I could listen to this for like hours without... Do you often do that? Do you find you get things running and then just leave them as sort of... Yeah, the patch, I, not always, but I tend to bake them. No, they stay on because you can come back to them and there's something different that happened because, you know, things warm it. up. Yeah, and so things change. But uh, like something like this would be easy to sort of, you know, add to, you know, because you start hearing, I'm just going to steal stuff from this. It does sound like a pipe is leaking somewhere in here. It's really unusual. Amazing. And then, uh, you know, you can set up your sequence however you want, but I like the fact that it's five steps, so it makes you come up with stuff that is not quite... Do you think that was intentional? Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tom probably saw every other thing, maybe being in four or six, or, and he made right. them seven or five. Deadlines are obviously well. It really depends what instrument I'm using. Sometimes it's songs, so it's right. you know I don't I don't even touch the synths. But right. uh, most of the times I know what I want. I can't say I know what I want from them, but I know what instrument to go to and how to get get it with, with a good compromise between orig originality, like for the sound to be unique, and uh, quickness. So yeah. it's not like oh they have to wait for me to come up with a sound. They can't do that, you yeah. know. So and I think I've. These instruments know me enough. There's, a, you know, that they trust me and I trust them. So, right. uh, I know I sound like a crazy person, but you know, when you stay yeah, in here well, for you a need, long you time, need to, you need to have a relationship to understand yeah. what, yeah, yeah. What, and what, I what think you know, and that them. leads you to a point where I'm not going to be writing a whole commercial on this, you know, and record it to two tracks. Yeah. I can't. My stuff different, but so I might use it for weird, you know, droney stuff like this. But maybe not for you know for for a whole thing, and it's kind of like the same thing as using modulars live with nine inch nails. It's like they're not the centerpiece; it's a, they're a part. Yeah, it, it, they're a part of the whole show, you know. And it's a good compromise in the sense that I think it's appreciated for what it is. Uh, but it's also it's not like if it goes down, the whole you know, yeah. no one no one cares in the end, you know. But me, <laughs> no. But that's an interesting point, isn't it? Because I mean. They are so encompassing and they are so absorbing that you assume, you know, you, you kind of think, well, it should be everything, but yes, it's a, it's a tool. Ultimately. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, I was trying to figure out what we could add, but <laughs> let's see. I hate breaking this patch, but there was nothing that we haven't done before in that one. But, you know, there's also five channel, uh, four channels of sequencing, so you can just... Take the second one to sequence.
or you could use the keyboard to control that one. See, the thing is, you have to. If I if I usually tune it within itself. Yeah, and then just work. And then if it's my own stuff, I leave it that way because it's not like I need to, you know, tune it to anything else. But if I'm working, then there's a tuner, like either Logic or there's a Brainworks tuner on the Apollo interface that I, I keep on on every channel. But this. Imagining the pictures that are going to go with it. Yeah, them. I mean, it's just a, it's a very creative... There's not much you can do with a system like this because it's small, but that actually allows you to do much more than you would if I would play with that, in, in this specific case. But. So all of this stuff goes into uh, the Apollo, All this, that... yeah, this goes into that, which right. has the mixer in that, eight yeah. channels, and those eight channels show up on my Apollo, actually show up in my patch bay up here. So there's eight channels here for Bukla. And, uh, and there's uh, 16 channels coming from the patch bays in that corner. So all the synths can be patched in into a, into a patch bay down there. And then uh, here are the audio inputs, 16 audio inputs of the interface. Right. And I have on top of it, I have a stereo, which I love, stereo preamp by Aurora Audio, which is Neve, Neve Vibe, yeah. and a stereo compressor, which I love also. And I use this mostly for instruments that uh, are not part of the patch bay. So things that I plug in and out of the situation, like the... Uh, um, is, yeah, the EMS a... stuff or uh, the Bukla here. The this is another weird guy. This is a Bukla seven hundred. That is an unusual and rare looking instrument. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a weird beast. It sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. But let's see. This actually I prepared. I had a little piece that I I did on it to play you guys to see. It's a very we're back to 80, 87, 88 here with like Super FM world. But and basically this. It's Don's instrument. This was the portable instrument for him. You know, he designed this in the 70, in the 80, 87, and it was supposed to be an instrument that you could put in the front seat under a plane, so you could actually right. fly with. And uh, aside from the monitor, needless yeah. to say, because you know, I <laughs> still have to bring Mr. Monitor with you most yeah, of the time. But uh, but it has its own case and it's portable. You know, um, MIDI controllable, two two MIDI inputs and outputs, so it allows you to to pretty much MIDI control everything. Uh, now the screen is down since uh, it's a ah. it has a system to protect it. But uh, these are uh, real time controllers. Okay. In this case, you can see it's the index of the FM for each one of the voices and uh, general filter and resonance. Um, and then this is the mouse. <laughs> As you can see, it's a cursor that will move. Oh, sticky cursor. Right, yeah. Oh, wow. And then right now, well, you know, you can go to the instrument Cupid's designer. Cupid's arrow. Yeah. It's kind of like Amiga-ish. And then you go to, uh, like, for example, the instrument editor, and you'll be able to access information about the index, or so the amount of modulation for each one of the, uh, the voices, the, the MIDI configuration, uh, sorry, the FM configuration, right, so the so routing. The press, yeah. And then the wave shape, which right now it's nothing really, I don't think... There's anything here, but if I wanted to choose another one, I don't think I loaded a wave shape bank because for each one of the settings you have to they see these are all basically standard, um, un unadult, you know, un unedited. Um, but so there's that. There's the wave shape editor where I could actually go and edit the wave shape if I wanted to. Just go to one of them and then choose a value. Looks like a lot of fun to program. There you go. Whoa. And then you get, it totally looks like Amiga stuff. You're yeah. like, yeah, I did this and and then just creates a weird image. Galaxian. Yeah. And then uh, and then there's a score editor, which basically allows you to... So it's like an FM 
uh, kind of workstation, fairlight. basically. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, um, definitely weirder yeah. in a way. I mean, I haven't really played with the Fairlight enough to, but obviously you see how Don designed these instruments. And definitely this is another, you know, that's how it sounds like. to do with the, the weirdness of the interface that makes you kind of go in that direction? Because, I mean, I imagine it's Well, this was, uh, you know, here we're borderline collecting, I think. You know, yeah. and I've, 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 it, there's a certain amount of uh, fetish that comes with the Bukla world, as far as I'm concerned, in the sense that I really like Don as a designer um, because he's a musician. So a lot of these instruments he's designed for himself. And there is a common thread to all of them. But obviously, if I'd have to pick one instrument to be the 200, simply because of manuality. Yeah. But all of them, the 400, which is the one I showed you earlier, and the 700, are as far as you could have pushed it at the time. Right. So there's always something that attracts me to them. Right. That said, it's very hard to write on it. Yeah. And it's an FM, FM. A lot of people don't like FM that. is a very you know, hard synthesis. A, but in that world, I think it's a very unique sounding FM instrument. Mm. Uh, it's very, very big. You know, mm -hmm. it's a very big sounding instrument, and uh, um, there's a lot of boards inside. Right. You know, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff going on in that thing. And sometimes I have to boot it up four times because... Uh, yeah, maybe it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it works. I mean, uh, this one, uh, you can't see it, but to the side, it has a SD card reader. So the floppy has been, you know, um, replaced by an SD card reader, so I can just... Uh, save everything to a uh, you know, modern SD card. Mm. And it makes it much easier to back everything up. Because in the case of, this is actually not as difficult, but in the case of 400, the only way that you can actually copy 400 discs is with another 400. So, you know, right. I can't just call, you know, Richard D. James and say, hey man, could you make me a copy? It's not, we're not, you yeah. know, I don't know him. So I can't, and even then probably would go, what the hell? You know, so, <laughs> um, so it's, uh, I'm glad that uh, actually JL, John Linesider in, uh, in Canada at Cantos helped me with a lot of the restoring of, of these instruments. He's, right. uh, Incredible and stuff like that. I've just never seen or heard of one of these. This is a complete rarity. Actually, there's a, a friend of mine, great musician from, from England called Benji. You probably met Benj. Ben Edwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he recorded, had a chance to do a record on it, which is pretty, very pretty record. Right. Uh, he has it on very his band. ambitious, band. I'd imagine, as well. Well, he, I mean, it's incredible because I don't think he had that much time to work on it. I think it was, uh, he, he found himself in a location where our, our, we had a friend in common called Richard Smith, and uh, he um, has a lot of these instruments in top form, you know, so he was able to let him play with it and write. And I think Ben, probably in a day or something, recorded enough material to make a, a great record. It's, uh, you know, it's not just him fucking around. Like this, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's actually got a. <laughs> no, the, well, you know, the thing is, I've done a lot of stuff where I I control it with the circle on, but I kind of like knowing that I can do it. You know, that it'll take me fucking four weeks, but I can make a piece like this and right. just from it, like yeah. it was designed to be made. And it, I know it sounds silly, but to me, it feels since there's not that much stuff out on this instrument, to me, it does feel like like uncharted territories, you know, mm. so it's like, I do feel like I'm one of the first ones to make sounds with it, which well, and they probably it are, makes yeah. me happy. I'm not doing it for other people. In fact, you're the first person I tell stuff like this, you know what I mean? Right. It's not like, oh, this is the first, you know, but I do feel like, oh, wait, no one has really made music that I could find with this. So sure. it does feel like you're using something that uh, has a certain importance. And like I mean, that, that, that seems to be a f philosophy. I mean, you take it for the, the 202 or the stuff that you do on the individual instruments. I mean, do you have like a a, 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 a playlist, if you like? It's like, I want to do some tunes purely on these synthesizers. You haven't got round to yet that you want to kind of explore. I've been deeply. working on uh, on the Make Noise system and doing stuff with that one, uh, right. just because it's been part of the live rig for so long. And uh, I've already used it to do a 45 for the label, for a 7 inch for, the, for them. <laughs> Uh, but all of them, I use the Prophet 5 a lot. I think one day it's going to come. The, the two-voice, the Oberheim, is one of those instruments that I think has a 
as a charm of it, you know, very unique. And with the fact that it has a sequencer, that one, again, you can just limit the steps. It doesn't have to be eight. So it makes up for a very interesting. Uh, you add a delay and you can come up with very cool stuff. Mm. Um, but all of the instruments, you know, I mean, the 303 is another instrument that I'd like to be able to do stuff uh, alone with nothing else. But it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, to, there's a new record coming out with the 202 that has a little bit of 303 synced to it. So that'll be okay. a, a kind of look, a little bit of a different approach to the first record. But it recorded at the same time, actually. And, and yeah, so this is, this is the spot. You know. Well, I suppose the other thing with working with a lot of this old stuff is, you know, you're... X they tend in, to fail. And if something goes wrong, it's like... Ah. Yeah, they tend to fail. Luckily, I never found my, myself in a position where it cost me uh, what I was doing. There's do always you, something I can pick up pick up from. With do you try and print as you go, or do you try I and run print. the whole thing live and then... Uh, it depends, but I try to print. Well, once I'm happy, I just print and then right. move on. This has been awesome. Well, thank you guys for coming. Thank you very well, much. Well, you guys leaving? No, you guys should stay here forever. Yeah, well, I it's have very no tempting. one here. So it's it's very <laughs> tempting. But our flight leaves. Well, mine and Ed flight leaves tonight. But uh, well, thank you for stopping by. Thank it you. It was a pleasure.